Huntsville High School. I'm a flight commander, and I like to participate in many hobbies, including taking flying lessons. Yes, I do do that. It takes a lot of studying, a lot of repetition, but it's worth it when you get in that cockpit. And when you get to turn the control of the aircraft, it's that feeling feels so genuine, so good. And I also, I'm also a track runner. I run 400, 200, and also the 800. I made state a couple of times, and my freshman year I got eight place in regionals. Woo! This topic, effective communication. Questions that may arise on this topic are, Hmm. How do I get my team members motivated to do what I, what I want, want them to do? Or at home, how do I get my brother and my mom to listen to me since they never listen to me? Here, I have those answers to these questions. As you can see, there have been many incidents, many fatalities due to bad communication, accidents, the fear of public speaking, wars, and what's even more ironic is cell phone zombies. Now, I know all of you guys have cell phones, but in this generation, in this century, the use of cell phones has turned into an addiction. And even more gruesome, it is decaying our social skills. I call this a zombie because we all have the ability to talk to one another, but our cell phones are decaying that, and we're being more dependent on talking to each other through cell phones, through text, through Snapchat and stuff. So that's why I refer it to a cell phone zombies. Here I have a famous quote. Those who do not know history's mistakes are doomed to repeat them, George Santiana. See, this great quote means, if you don't learn the lessons from the past, you're gonna repeat it. A person learns from his mistakes, but even a wiser person learns from others' mistakes. Once you learn from their mistakes, become a wiser person, even a better team leader or team member. So here I have the effective communication cycle. So the team leader is like the sender. He's sending the message. He's telling you guys what to do. And you guys are like the receivers. You guys are the ones that do it. And then the feedback loop is like questions you may have. And when you guys are on doing competitions or any stuff like that, activities, when you become, when it's your time to have that position of power, find your purposes, find what you want them to do. Are you trying to provide information? Like give them info about what they're doing? Are you trying to persuade them when you're making decisions? Like why this should be this way or why it should not? Are you trying to coach them, to mentor them, to like be their support? Or are you trying to clarify, like make sure everybody understands? Clarification is big because if not everybody knows what they're supposed to do, it's going to be a huge train wreck. Everything is going to come down, and you guys may not be able to complete the task or objective you're trying to complete. And when you guys make know your audience, when you guys make presentations at school. This, because this is helping you sort of life for the next journey. You want to know who are your audience? Are they like kids our age? Are they like little kids? Are they like teachers? Know who they are. What motivates them? What incites them? What gets them to buy your product? What gets them to look at you to see that you're the top? See that you're the best dog, that you're the line of the lead, your leadership, the team, or your JRTC unit? They know what appeals to them, what gets their interest. Know what they like and know what they want. Keeping audience attention. 
when you make presentations, say at school or at JRTC, what you're saying has an impact, whether you're saying it in a boring tone, by like boring, people will doze off, they won't listen to you, but if you're saying it in a strong tone, the vocal variety, they'll pay attention to you, they'll zone into you, and their eyes will never waver off of you. Your slides, are your slides colorful? Your presence, are you wearing dress to impress? Are you wearing like a baggy outfit, which will, you'll have a nasty reaction from your audience? Handouts, if you're like in biz, future business leaders of America, you can pass out handouts to people that know what you're talking about. That'll give them knowledge. Audience interaction, having the audience be involved in what you're saying, what you do. Eye contact. You want to have eye contact when you're making a presentation. See how my eyes are making eye contact with every one of you? So when you make eye contact, the audience feels like you're talking to them. They'll feel like you're actually speaking to them and communicating effectively to them. They'll feel important on what you have to say. Conveying your message. When you convey your message, you want to have to be assertive Accept confidence, words have power, and your body language. Being assertive, confidence, confidence, confidence. Confidence is knowing your information. It is practicing and rehearsing on what you're going to do. Strength. Strength is like a foundation. It's support for your confidence. It keeps the people that you're conveying to listening to you, and it keeps them believing in you. Because whoever you're in charge of, when you get that time, when it's your time of power, your time of position, they want to feel like they trust you. So if you have that strength and confidence, they'll listen to you. They'll be keen in, and they will trust in you. Your tone. Are you talking in a dull tone like, oh, I don't have any self-confidence? Or are you talking in a confident tone? That's another thing. Words have power. See, your word choice has a huge impact on your team. So, I have an example. He's the team captain of the track team, and you're doing a relay run. But she messes up. And so, if he chooses to say mean words like, oh, you're so stupid, you messed up, she's going to feel bad about herself and she won't be able to do good the next time. But if he changes his word tone, where he says, if he says, you did a good job, we'll improve on the mistakes next time, she'll feel great about herself. And the next time you guys hit that relay run, next time you hit the relay run, they're gonna win, they're gonna do good because she improved on her mistakes she made last time. This is a famous quote. A knife may saw our body, but careless words will wound a soul. Bang of beeping Ariana. See, when he decided to use bad words to her, that was more hurting than a knife cutting an arm. It hurts more. But when you use good words, that's like finding flowers in the soul. It makes you feel good and important, like your life's value. Body language. When the gestures, when you make important points, because this is the power, this is conveying your message effectively. People will be paying attention. Gesturing and phrasing. When I was talking about confidence, 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 I was gesturing because I want the, you guys to understand that confidence plays a key role when you convey your message, when you get your team members to what you want them to do. And conveying your message. 55% is body movements. What you're doing is that audience is distracted by that. They pay attention by that. Can you do that? 38% is your voice. Are you being vocal enough so everybody can hear you? Or are you being more dull and lacking in self confidence? And 7% is the words you use. Are you using strong words like confidence? Or are you being dull and just using like basic grammar, basic words that don't get the audience, uh, audience's appeal? Cultural sensitivity. So, at the UN, 
when they make like their meetings, they have a problem, the language barrier. So they have interpreters to find that solution for the language barriers. So when they make when they make a speech or do their meetings, they have those little gear chips and they understand what's going on. So to handle this problem, I know many people are from many different backgrounds and many different cultures. So to get to appeal to everybody, to communicate effectively to everybody in a culture, get to know them, get to know their story, get to know their life background. And if you know any stereotypes on that you have in a specific race or group, cut them. Get to know them and that'll help your team. I have another example. Even if it doesn't have to be like other countries, say you go to Ohio and you're a football fan, an Alabama football tent fan, and you say roll tide up there. In Ohio, they have no idea what roll tide means. They'll be like, what? He's a crazy red man. Something like that. They have no idea. So that's another example. Ooh, barriers to effective communication. Time, you may be rushed. So when you're rushed on time, you may be giving everybody information, but they not, might not know what they're doing. Language, noise, distractions, put down. And another big run, discomfort and lack of interest. To handle this, these problems, these parasites, communication, you want to make sure you get everybody's input, make sure everybody's involved, and when you're rushed on time, make sure you explain it clearly to what you guys want to do. Because as students, you'll be in many time rush situations. So you need to sit down and get everybody's involvement because multiple minds are greater than one mind. Nonverbal communication. Here I have a part two. He's unapproachable right now. That means he's not interested. He's not wanting to work. He's angry. I'll say a way out of this, right? When he, when someone's breathing heavily and they're mad or like a team member is mad or something, just leave him alone because you don't know what's going on in his life right now. So he may not want to be bothered. Some people don't have like, they have their social side and their unsocial side when they don't want to talk to anybody. My opinion doesn't count. This is another problem. When you're trying to talk, I've been in a situation when you're trying to talk to somebody, but they're like moving, like they, they hear you, but they like, they totally don't listen to you. So when you're in that situation, sometimes you have to let him wait to finish, to finish talking and then wait for your right time with patience, then state your idea. Here's another one. I wonder what he's hiding. I wonder what he's hiding. Woo! He may be hiding another girl, another person, maybe having an affair with another girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In teams, I notice from experience there's different types of people. You have a type A, competitive, time urgent people that want to get the things done, I call them the go-getters. Then you have the type B, they're more relaxed. And they're kind of like the more planning people. So, in a team, say he's the type A, he, he's going to be the one doing the things, getting the tasks done on time, getting everything done. Then the type B, since he's more relaxed and he likes to do things one thing at a time, he's going to be the planner and he's going to give the type A guy, the instructions, and he's going to go get it and get it done. I like this quote. Perfect practice makes perfect. When you guys are making re presentations, you want to record your voice and see your voice tone on how you do. Rehearse your information. Rehearse it. Practice it. That's practicing it. And another thing, is memorizing. Memorize the main points. Memorize on what you're saying. Another thing is practicing in front of friend groups, in front of teachers, your family, all your support systems, 
because they'll help you feel confident and they'll give you the instructive criticism you need. Historical research. I want you guys to study when you make presentations, study the both the good and the bad. I'm gonna start off with the bad first. See, these three guys have done some bad things, but they were surely good at communicating effectively. The two Nazis, Adolf Hitler and Joseph Goebbels, they were good at communicating to a population at the time of over 60 million Germans. They were able to get a large percent of them to hate one minority, the Jewish race. Then we have Abu Bakr Baghdadi. He's the leader of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. He's able to get foreign fighters from around the world to contribute to a very barbaric cause. Then we have the good side. Martin Luther King, he was able to communicate to get his people to be peaceful during very violent times. He was able to get them to do nonviolent marches when people were throwing rocks at his people and his people were getting assaulted, killed, and lynched in front of them. President Ronald Reagan, he was able to keep the hearts and minds of the American people during times of great recession. Then Prime Minister Winston Churchill, his people were literally being bombed in front of them during the early stages of World War II. But he was able to keep his people united during those times of crisis. And eventually, they were able to beat the Nazi regime. Important points I want you guys to go back with and to contribute to your team's effort and success. Keeping audience attention, knowing how to keep your team members involved. Barriers, I want you guys to remember the barriers to effective communication, not including everybody's ideas. Time brush, language barriers, lack of interest, and discomfort from what you guys are about to do. Practicing. I want you guys, when you guys do your introductions, if you guys will do it soon, I want you guys to practice with each other because you guys are each other's support roles. And I have a famous quote. A quote. Honor bespeaks worth. Confidence begets trust. Service brings satisfaction. Cooperation proves the quality of leadership. James Cash Penny. So now I have the introduction activity by the staff members. 